Hello, welcome to No Man Running. Today's the two-year anniversary of the first time I was actually able to run 5K in one unbroken run. And so I thought I would celebrate it by putting together a list of the 10 things that I wish I'd known back then after my first 5K run that I feel I know a lot better now. And hopefully some of these may be of some use to you. You've got to vary your running speeds. After I'd finished my first ever 5K, I went to 10K and I decided at first that I wanted to break an hour and I just kept going as hard as I could, as fast as I could until finally I broke it. And it took me a long time. And it was because I was doing the same thing every single day, running as hard as I could until I got to it. And it's clear and obvious from all the literature, from all the experts, that there's a much more efficient way to improve your running. And that is kind of an 80-20 rule Run slow 80% of the time in your aerobic zone and improve your aerobic ability. Run about 20% of your time hard, improve your speed. Now there's nuances in between of that. There's, there's tempo runs, fast finish, long runs, so on and so forth. But in general terms, 80% slow, run your slow runs slow and your fast runs really fast. You've got to understand what your shoe needs are. I, I celebrated after my 5K by treat myself to a pair of proper running shoes. I'd just been running in a pair of old trainers on the beach up until that point. And so I went to run in warehouse and I saw a pair of light that was on sale and I just went ahead and bought them because I liked the look of them. And because they were Adidas, a brand that I liked. But I ended up buying a pair of carbon plated running shoes that I was using for running on the beach. And I just hadn't appreciated the nuances of running shoes between shoes designed for races or fast tempos, between shoes designed for helping you with extra cushion, lightweight shoes, shoes to deal with pronation. And I would thoroughly recommend to any beginning runner to go to your local running store, have the experts check out your gait, talk to you about the type of running you want to do and find the right pair of shoes for you. And don't be an ass, buy your first pair of shoes from that running store. Don't go scooting off home and buying a pair online for five bucks less after they've given you all that help. Strength training, unfortunately, is a big deal. I've noticed a huge benefit between my first and my second marathon and then thereafter from incorporating a strength training regime to help me improve my endurance and my capabilities. I'm not a fan of lifting weights. I really don't enjoy it, but it doesn't need to be like that. There are plenty of resources online that will show you great body weight or lightweight exercises that you can do. And I've found something that I can do at home or in the gym equally as easily. And it's made an enormous difference to my running capabilities and my endurance. So try and find a way to incorporate one or maybe two strength sessions a week into your overall running training program and your running will be so much the better for it. On long runs, it's okay to stop for a break or for water, for gels or to take photographs or just to smell the roses. It makes no difference to a one and a half hour long run if you've taken two minute breaks every couple of miles or so. And it can have the benefit of maybe getting your heart rate back down into the aerobic zone that you want to be training in for a long run. It can just re-energize you. You can refuel or rehydrate without having to try and fiddle with that on the run. And another good thing about it is it allows you to chunk your long runs up on days that you're struggling. You can tell yourself, I'm only a mile and a half from my next water stop. And that can be a huge benefit in difficult days. On difficult days, though, it's good to have them. I used to always think a bad training day was a disaster. You know, I felt terrible after it and, you know, I thought my running was all falling apart. But I saw a post from an elite athlete that talked about the rule of thirds. She said that a third of your runs should feel really great. A third of your runs should feel terrible. And a third of your runs should be kind of meh in between. And the rationale for that is that if you're always feeling great when you're running, then you're probably not pushing yourself hard enough. And if you're always feeling terrible when you're running, then maybe you just don't have a balanced enough training program. And so it kind of made sense to me and it kind of put into perspective for me how my training was going in an overall sense rather than getting too hung up on individual runs. Nutrition and hydration is a thing. 
especially if you start to get into training for longer races and you end up doing long runs at the weekends or really anything over an hour. I had a lot of experiences at the beginning of my running where I ended up dehydrated or you know, struggling from a lack of electrolytes or just having clearly underfueled and running out of fuel during a long run. So it's good to develop a little bit of a nutrition regime for long runs, what you're going to take before, what you're going to take with you, what you're going to have ready after the runs. And it, it's not as simple as it seems at first glance. There's a lot of different ways you can go about that. And you've got to also think about how you might carry your, uh, you know, whether it's gels or small water flasks or whatever. So it takes a little bit of an investment in time and energy, but it's worth it to make sure that you're properly fueled and hydrated and can properly enjoy and get the best benefit from your long runs. Your brain will play tricks on you. I've read a ton of articles recently that really resonate with me that talk about the fact that your brain is designed to defend you from getting into extreme situations where you're putting yourself at great physical risk. Long before you're in a state of exhaustion or danger, your brain is telling you that you're there because it wants to avoid you getting into that kind of situation. Another way that my brain plays tricks on me is just before runs when I'm getting ready or the first 400 meters or so of a run and all the little niggles and twinges and pains come to the forefront. And I've learned to just ignore how my body feels for the first four or 500 meters of a run. Or sometimes after a difficult training week, after the first mile and a half of a run. But it does bring up one of the dilemmas that face us as older runners. And that is that our bodies are in a position where they're ready to break down more than a younger runner's bodies are. And so you've got to develop your own understanding of your body. And when it's your brain sending you signals that you can ignore... And when it's actually you putting yourself in the position of potentially getting injured. And that's a skill that takes some time to learn. But one thing you can do to help with that skill is not to rush your progress on a training plan. And by that, I mean you just cannot go from 0 to 100. You will inevitably pay the price for trying to rush your progress. I'll give you an example from last week. I did a two-hour strength session followed by a five mile easy run when it had been three or four weeks since I'd done a strength session. And I went straight into two hour one and now this week I'm dealing with the fact that I've got to rest and not run for three days because I've got a strained Achilles and a little bit of a sore calf and I know that if I go out running right now I could really uh, properly injure myself. There are some rules that you see online for managing that progress. You see the 10% rule where they say you shouldn't add more than 10% to your training burden from the week before. And, and that's a measure you could use. There's another slightly more sophisticated measure that I read about a couple of weeks ago that I've started to try and incorporate. Your acute and chronic workload ratio. And essentially what it is, is comparing the mileage that you're doing this week to a moving average of your last three or your last four weeks and keeping that within a ratio of 0.8 to 1.5. So have a little look at that if you feel the 10% rule is a bit arbitrary. Another thing that I've learned is that races can really reinvigorate a training program or get you running out of a rut or move you on from a plateau. And carefully scheduling some races is not just a ton of fun, but also a way to vary your training and to knock you sometimes to a new level. And that can be a new level of performance or it can be a new level of confidence where all of a sudden you realize that you've just run five minutes faster than you ever thought you could for a particular distance. And that does wonders for your training moving forward. So consider scheduling series of races as part of your overall running plans. And then finally, and maybe the best thing I've learned is... It's easier with friends. I've made a ton of friends in my running over the last two years. And that's been wonderful from a friendship perspective. But it's also been wonderful from a training perspective. When I trained for my first marathon, I was doing 18, 20, 22 milers on my own. Now I'm able to schedule at least part of those long runs with a run that 
my friends and I routinely do on a Sunday. And that's made an enormous difference to my training and my ability to cope with marathon training. Join your local running group. Don't be shy. Once you get started, you'll find that people are at varying levels and inevitably there'll be someone at your level that you can get to know and enjoy running with. So that's it. I think that's the 10 key things I've learned in my two years of running. No doubt the next two years will bring me another 10 things or more that I hadn't thought about and I'm looking forward to learning them, some of them probably the hard way. If you've got any lessons that you've learned that you think I've missed, then love to hear them. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like and consider subscribing to An Old Man Running.